Faxverse presents Man Hid in a Forest for 27 Years Was Caught for Thievery. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. A Thief in the Night In rural Maine, people have reported seeing the shadow of what they think is a person taking things from their homes. The thief wasn't taking valuables like electronics, cash, and expensive jewelry, but it was still unsettling to the people who lived there. Some people believe that the thief isn't even human. Some are sure that it's a demon or a supernatural force. The thefts have been occurring for 30 years in North Pond, Maine. The people there have reported hearing strange sounds in the night. When they turned the lights on, they saw nothing. The decades-long mystery has been worrying the residents. The Thief's Hall The people of the town didn't know who was breaking into their home, and the items that they would take were just strange. It was never anything of value. They would take boots, magazines, junk food, jeans, winter jackets, heavy boots, and batteries. Due to the things that the thief was stealing, he was given a few unusual nicknames. Some locals call him the North Pond Hermit, Maine's Loch Ness Monster, the Stealthy Yeti, the Hungry Man, the Mountain Man. After each crime, the victims would call the police to report it, and they took a report and put it in a file. For decades, the police couldn't solve the crime. It got to the point where frustration took over. Being Watched the people who lived in the area say they always felt like they were being watched. Residents placed cameras around their homes and kept their doors and windows locked. Still, this wasn't enough. Somehow, the thief was able to get around these obstacles. He could still break into the homes to get the items he needed. Pin Tree Summer Camp Things took a turn in North Pond when the thief set his sights on the Pin Tree Summer Camp. It was an excellent place for a burglar to slip in unnoticed. There was plenty of school at the camp and supplies that he might need if he were living in the woods. What the thief didn't know was that the police were one step ahead of him. Sergeant Terry Hughes was the point man for the operation to catch the thief, and he was determined to put an end to things finally. The Necessary Tools Sergeant Hughes gathered all the necessary tools he thought he would need to catch the thief. He had cameras, military-grade motion sensors, and industrial-grade floodlights. The sergeant placed these things in areas where there were food and other supplies, where he was sure the thief would strike. He also put a silent alarm in the kitchen. The last time the thief struck the camp, he took food and a spare key to the kitchen. This made the sergeant believe he would strike that area again. Finally, the hunt was on. The Alarm Sounds On April 4, 2013, the silent alarm installed in the back of the ice machine sounded at Sergeant Hughes' home. The sheriff hurried to the site, ready to catch the thief. He was sure that the thief would be in the kitchen, but he wasn't sure if it would be a criminal with a weapon or a desperate homeless person just looking for food. When the sergeant arrived, he saw a man he never expected to see. The man was middle-aged, he was clean-shaven, and well-dressed. He couldn't have been a starving homeless man because he was a bit overweight. The sergeant was ready to capture the thief and finally find out who he was. The Capture when the man came walking out of the dining hall, Sergeant Hughes blinded him with a flashlight. The man was carrying a bag filled with food. The officer had a gun in his hand and ordered the man to the ground. The thief complied with the orders as they were issued, which surprised the officer a bit. He didn't think the man would be so willing to surrender after so many years. Sergeant Hughes had a state trooper with him, Officer Diane Perkins Vance. They captured the man and handcuffed him to a chair. The two wanted to know who this man was and why he was stealing from the locals. The man was very pale and he was wearing old glasses. He didn't have an ID on him and refused to ask any questions. As time passed, the man started to open up. 27 Years in the Woods It took the man about two hours to start talking, and when he finally did, he told the officers that he felt ashamed. His name was Christopher Thomas Knight. The officers thought he would say he lived in the woods, but they never expected him to have been living there so long. Christopher wasn't sure how long he had been in the woods, but he remembered that the Chernobyl disaster occurred right before he started living in the woods. This meant that the man had been living in the woods since 1986. The two officers were shocked. They couldn't believe that he had been living in the woods for 27 years. The officers were wondering what caused the man to leave society and move to the woods in the first place. Christopher's Life Christopher was born on December 7, 1965, in Albion, Maine. He described himself as a loner and claimed he was like that ever since he was born. Christopher said he had good parents, but they weren't affectionate. 
They were never the hugging type of parents. Christopher admitted to having trouble communicating with people and relating to them beyond the basic level. He always lived in his own world and did things that he liked, but nobody expected him to live off the grid. A good student. In school, Christopher was a good student. He got excellent grades and he finished high school early. Unfortunately, he never made a friend in high school. After high school, Christopher moved to Boston to attend Sylvania Technical School in Waltham, Massachusetts. He wanted to study electronics. Since Christopher had no friends to spend his free time with, he started installing car alarms and home alarms. He managed to buy himself a car thanks to a loan from his brother. One day, Christopher just disappeared. He didn't even pay off his loan yet, and he was gone. Alone in a Big Family Christopher was the middle child in his family. He had four older brothers and a younger sister. He would go with his family on hunting trips, and the family would sleep in the back of his father's pickup truck. Even though he had so many siblings, Christopher was still a loner. His parents wanted the kids to be well-rounded. They would have the boys discuss poetry every night, and they performed science and physics experiments. After leaving for college, Christopher's life seemed pretty good. He was excelling in his studies, and he was doing well at work. Nobody understood why he disappeared without even saying goodbye to his family. Christopher told the officers that when he disappeared, he had no plans when he left. He wasn't thinking, and he just did it. Leaving it all behind. The day Christopher left, he got in his car and drove south, following the sun. It was a hot day, and Christopher drove until the gas tank was empty. By this point, his Subaru couldn't be seen from a distance. He left the keys on the dashboard and continued on foot. Christopher left everything behind except for a tent and a backpack. The officers couldn't imagine how this man lasted a week in the wilderness, let alone 27 years. No survival skills. Christopher had no survival skills at all. After the first two weeks, he realized how hard it was to survive in the woods alone. It was then that he realized he had to pursue a life of crime to survive. He lived on berries for a while and realized he needed more if he was going to survive. He didn't want to beg for food or sell things to make money because he didn't want to see other humans. He was willing to do whatever it took to survive while remaining hidden. He set up a home in the woods, but he needed food. Small Steps It wasn't long before Christopher realized there weren't enough plants for him to live on. He found a dead bird on the road and ate it raw. He knew that this could be dangerous, so he started taking food from people's gardens. He didn't want to see people, so he stole from the gardens after dark. He also took a very small amount from the gardens so the homeowners would blame a rabbit or another animal for taking the food. He knew that his tent wouldn't be appropriate if it rained, so he found an empty cabin to spend a night. He was nervous all night and decided to never stay in the cabin again. He decided to never sleep indoors, even in the harshest weather conditions. Finally, Christopher found a hidden area where he would make his new home. Basic Needs Christopher would melt snow to get water. He put magazines on the floor of his tent to also collect water. Unfortunately, he needed more magazines. When he went out of the tent, he made sure not to leave footprints in the snow that someone could follow. He even sneezed very quietly. When Christopher became desperate for basic needs, he started targeting homes in the area. He took notes on the residents' behavior and when they came and went. He also took notes about security cameras. Christopher made sure to get what he needed, but not too much that the homeowner would realize that something was missing. He even took spare keys to make getting into the houses easier. He also stole a canoe to help him get close to the homes across the lake. When he was done with the canoe, he returned it. To treat himself, he would steal chocolate bars and Mountain Dew. He also stole blankets to keep warm, winter jackets, and boots. He even took tarps to keep his home dry when it rained. Christopher made sure to always respect the homes that he robbed and never caused any damage. 1,000 Robberies over the course of 27 years, Christopher admitted to having done 1,000 burglaries. Winters in Maine are brutal, and to stay alive, Christopher had to keep moving from 2 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. There were times that his own sweat turned to ice. There were times he got frostbite, and he treated it himself. Sentenced. After Christopher's arrest, he pleaded guilty to 13 charges of theft and burglary. The sentencing hearing took place on October 28, 2013, in Kennebec Country Superior Court. He had been in jail since April by the time he was sentenced. He was sentenced to seven months in prison, which he had already served. The judge told him that he wanted to sentence him to seven years, but if he got a job and took classes, it would be cut to seven months. He also had to pay each of his victims $1,500. He was ordered to stay away from alcohol and seek help for his mental issues. Back on Track Thanks to the judge's orders, Christopher got his life back on track. He reunited with his family while he was in jail and repaired the relationship. His brother offered him a job, and he took it. Christopher spent 27 years in solitude, so he had to practice speaking to others. 
and it was a slow and uncomfortable process. Christopher apologized publicly to his victims. An American journalist named Michael Finkel visited him in jail, and he wrote a story about Christopher called The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit. Christopher is living a normal life today, and each day it gets easier and easier. This man hid in the forest for 27 years, was caught for thievery, and forced to go back to living a normal life. Which part of the story did you think was craziest? Let us know in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to Facts First for more great videos.